Hey everyone, it's Nick from Nick's Crossing. Welcome to the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania, located here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, across the street from the mighty Strasburg Railroad. Today we're gonna to be looking at all these museum pieces here. We're gonna to go out to the yard first before they lock that up early, and we have some better daylight out here. And I've got about three hours to look around in this museum. But I'll be honest with you guys, three hours sounds like a long time, but at this museum, there's so much to see and so much to do. We need a little bit more than that, but we're gonna do the best we can. So here we go, everyone all aboard and look there's a gg1 behind me check that out all right so we are outside on the other side of the fence this is actually in the uh nine yard fencing here and this is a class dd1 locomotive 3937 and these things are really cool they look like a steam engine but they are electrified here's the uh <laughs> driving arms on here this is crazy counterweight there and here's actually a group pair of dd1s now these are the only surviving DD1s left, according to research that uh, I did a few weeks ago. And they're just outside. Uh, these really should be undercover, but uh, you know, money and space, I totally understand that. And uh, these are the last surviving ones. So this is it. And from my understanding, these are most likely used to taxi uh, passenger cars in confined spaces that would not allow steam just like the uh, New York Central stations or anything underground. So they hook up passenger cars, you'd be taxied underneath underground to those stations that would not allow steam or fired engines. All right guys, and outside we have old rivets, number 4800, the OG GG1, beautiful locomotive. And I believe this was painted in the Conrail blue scheme, the bicentennial scheme, a couple other paint schemes through its life. But it is out here for everyone to see. You can just walk up to it. You don't have to pay the uh, museum fee to see her, take pictures of her, and respectfully observe. Do not climb the fence. But here she is. And uh, you can just see all the framework on her. You know, a lot of cracks in the frame, uh, especially in the uh, drive wheels right there. But it was used and abused, and then retired. And there you go. Here's some cool stuff. There's a very long tanker car back there. It just keeps on going and going and going. But then we have like a skeleton car, aeromodal car. And it's quite windy out here. I apologize if you guys are hearing that wind. Always step over the rails. And here, is one of the classic Pennsylvania locomotives. This is a mountain engine. It's huge. I think it's called the M1 Mountain. And uh, these are very famously operated by the Pennsylvania Railroad. Got the huge bell pair firebox. Look at that. I'll show you guys. Thing is a monster. And this engine, unfortunately, is a little bit far past restoration, but it is on static display for us to love and enjoy. So here's the, uh, it's a 482 right here. And on the other side of this engine, I believe is one of my favorite engines of all time, but we'll get to that in just a few moments. So uh, here's a really cool car. It's a Lehigh Valley RDC. Rail diesel car, we'll go over there and check that out. And RDCs are uh, like a commuter vehicle. They're operated on either side of the car. And these are really cool. I'd love to ride in one of these at uh, Reading and Northern Haslam. This one does have the uh, modern-esque side sway reduction bars. But these are all uh, really cool. I believe they're all stainless steel. Number 40, there you go. And I've actually spoken to one of my friends uh, that's a huge Lehigh Valley fan. And he said that he has family members that have actually ridden on this car while it was in operation. But here it is everyone, RDC number 40, rail diesel car produced by the Bud Car Company. So cool, these are awesome. Looks like to my left, we have some uh, like standard box cars that have the old school bearings on them. They've been converted from hot boxes to roller bearings again. Let's see what's up here. 
beautiful day here. Not too cold, not too windy. We have the uh, industrial brown hoist. Pretty cool. Yeah, we'll go down this way. And this is all part of the uh, consist right here. It's like a maintenance away consist. We'll go up this way, check it out. Now this one looks like it's uh, diesel powered, I'm assuming. Maybe it was converted from steam. Got the big rollers right there. This whole thing rotates and there's like outrigs that come out. Uh, right here, you have these uh, outriggers that come out to, hold, to help hold this thing up. Got a good old Pennsylvania whistle sign right there. Good old W in frame. And uh, there you go. Brown hoist. Pretty sweet. I'm assuming the Baldwin is a Baldwin. <laughs> it looks like a Baldwin. Sorry, stepping over some uh, hazards there. There we go. Number 1200, the Baldwin Locomotive Works. Pretty sweet. Got some other really cool stuff out here. Got this switcher here. I'm not sure who made that. It's probably like a Baldwin or an Alco, honestly, by the uh, body style of it. We have a, uh, looks like a high-speed baggage car, possibly. Now this is a, uh, I believe it's a Reading Lines turntable. That's fully operational. They can use to move pieces around. There's a sneak peek of the engine we'll be seeing last right there. So we have a tender right here, Pennsylvania. And then if you go over here, here is a locomotive. Not sure if that's for the tender. Locomotive number 520, it's a, what, a 280? Oh no, 282. Wow. So, uh, there it is. That's in really rough shape. The tender even has like the little perch behind it. A little lookout tower. Always love seeing those. And the, uh, looks like it's been modernized with a water feed. Water feed system right here. Maybe like a superheater. Guys, this is so cool. So this right here, this auger is a stoker. So they could actually stoke the fire mechanically rather than shoveling coal into this beast. And the coal would be augered in in these openings right here and pulled into the firebox. Awesome. And there's a side of it right here. Called a snack. Snack bar, coach. All right, I want in. I'm hungry. <laughs> Check that out, guys. And this is electrified, which I wouldn't be surprised if there's a cab in here, or maybe the other side has a cab in it. All right, almost to the head end. There it is, front. So this is a... Uh, it's a cab car. Look at that. Amazing. Uh, I've seen these fly down the tracks, like the newer style. Uh, Metroliner. There you go. Metroliner. And the cab is literally from this little part here and over. That's it. And it looks like an aircraft in there. On the left, we have just a standard Amtrak coach with the old, uh, old ribbon logo there. Let's see if you can see in this one. There you go. And it looks like it has like little like roomettes. I'll show you guys, we'll zoom in. So it looks like we have like roomettes. So uh, get your own little private room. So next to the, uh, the roomette car, it looks pretty old, honestly. We have this Pennsylvania covered hopper, sweet. I wouldn't be surprised if this was used for like sand or something like that.
but not exactly sure. We got the old Keystone logo there. This looks like an old piece of maintenance away equipment. It's uh, been like corded off here, but I'd assume it has something to do with laying track or rail. It's really interesting. You have two like little bucket seats right here. I'm assuming this would be hooked up to another power unit. Or maybe like some cables and pulleys to help. Uh... Yeah, it's all pulley driven. There's no hydraulics in here. It's all cable and pulley driven. We got some pretty nasty looking stuff right here. I've actually been seeing more of these on Norfolk Southern's line with the uh, either black and silver. I uh, like the lightweight aluminum hoppers, but this one's pretty cool. And there's the old Conrail snail, as they call it. And behind this is actually something really cool. We have a, uh, looks like a motor car. That's really, really interesting. Is that the Mopar logo on the front? I think that is. <laughs> Got this evil looking motor car thing just hanging out in the yard. And you guys can't forget the Maryland and Pennsylvania Railway, the MAPA, which today the uh, York Rail or York Rail Corp or uh, York Railway occupies what's left of the Maryland Pennsylvania Railway. This is Switcher 81. I believe I've seen Switcher 85 at Muddy Creek Forks, Pennsylvania. Uh, they have it in their museum collection. Pretty cool. All right, guys, so not only do we have a Conrail hopper, we have this giant boxcar that's behind me. Look at this. Keeps on going on forever. And I'm not sure when this arrived, but we were at the Strasburg riding a train. We looked across the street, and I was like, holy crap, when did this arrive here? <laughs> but it's uh, from 1966, according to the builder's plate. So it's right at the end of the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad. Would have been in Penn Central and then painted brown, most likely Conrail, which is kind of why you see this big old, uh, it's like a box where the logo's at. You see like the weathering of it. But I wouldn't be surprised if underneath here you see like black Penn Central, but you can kind of see where the logo started and ended following like a box around it. We have an RF tag radio frequency identifier right here. So it has a tag on here. So when this comes into a yard, it's able to pick up and find out where the car's at, what it is, and where it's going. So it has this new RF badge on there instead of the old uh, barcode, which would have been in this area right underneath the classifications of the car. Now, I don't know if BPL, is that the uh, footage? Or is it a... Uh, is that the, the length of the car? 111 feet? That's pretty crazy, but it was built 166. And I can't forget this old girl. This is the best of the best. Their K4 hanging out in the yard. And uh, the good old 462 K4 class. I call it K4S, I've heard it called. But the K4. And this is my favorite steam engine of all time. And you got guys that are Hudson people. You got guys that are... Uh, Berkshire people, but this is my favorite, the K4. I just love the look of them. It's a very old, old locomotive. So we're going to go on the other side of the K4 to get a better look. But yeah, most of the controls are out of her. It's pretty empty. But it looks like it has some upgrades like uh, the water feed system right here. So uh, they probably ran this up until the end of steam. All right, so here is the K4. Builder's plate says 1920 on this one, so a little bit later. Uh, still has the original bell. And uh, she needs some love. Uh, I understand, like, it is an undertaking, but this is a K4. Would love to see this engine restored. Amazing. And on the left, here is the mountain engine. Just how huge that thing is, the M1. And there's the K4 back there, but to my left is another beast. This is the Amtrak E60 GE electrified locomotive. Pretty cool. I can see this thing flying down the track. But it's like the modern style GG1 in a way. <laughs> but behind it is actually a uh, little uh, club car right there. 
or uh, let's see, it looks like a parlor. I think it's all cleared out on the inside of there, but it has like the rounded uh, observation deck in the back that are just so cool. All right, guys, so starting at the museum, we're going to look on the right, and here is a beautiful E7 locomotive. And these would have been passenger locomotives, uh, high capacity passenger, with all the amenities loaded up in there. I believe these did have steam generators and all that. Uh, these are meant to take the heavy load off of uh, steam during the conversion period. But I would not be surprised if this was ever used for Amtrak back in its day, just because of all the amenities. And when Amtrak took in power, they you know took other companies' equipment that was used for passenger service. But this is gorgeous. I love it. These engines are huge. Got the vents up top. And I actually have a set of these in uh, Williams at uh, B&O. E7 set. And if we go down on the right, I believe this is a Jeep 9. And I think the placards are on the other side. I'm on the wrong side of the tracks here. Here, let's walk across the gangway here. Oh, here's the door of the E7. Mystic Portal awaits. <laughs> then here is the uh, front of the Jeep. So let's see what we got. Oh, they got this one all opened up for us. Pretty sweet. Wow. It's actually pretty clean in there. And I wouldn't be surprised if we found some uh, Conrail paint on these uh, old Jeeps. Might be able to find some for you guys. There you go. I think this is a Jeep 9. And uh, there you go. There she is right there. Uh, let's see, class GP9 right there. And the easiest way from at least my experience to tell about a Jeep 9, between a Jeep 7 and a Jeep 9, the fins up top right there, believe those are your dynamic braking cooling fans or uh, cooling vents. So I don't believe GP7's had that, but I could be completely wrong. So we're gonna move up a little bit more. Yeah, the other side's front. Doesn't say front right here. Here's a jack point right here. Yeah, there's the uh, other side of the cab. So you'd think the short end would be the uh, the cab side or the operator side, engineer side, but it's really the conductor, brakeman side. So I'm not sure why they did that. I, I have a feeling it had to do with safety or just getting to know the uh, locomotives and things like that at the time. Because these guys were uh, probably used to driving or operating steam engines, so they're given a diesel. But it had something to do with safety. And you should see a front F. There it is, F front. And this paint looks black, but it's actually Brunswick green, a very dark, very nice dark green. And I bet you on here you will see some Conrail blue sticking through. Um, so you can find it on the trucks or anything like that. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's the cab side. And they used to let you up in these. They'd remove the chain. You could walk up carefully into the cab. And there's the engineer's chair right there. And guys, look, here's Conrail blue paint right here. This little speck right here in there. And look how many layers of paint. That's crazy, just to protect this. Uh, but speaking of Conrail, <laughs> there she is, GP30, one of my favorite diesels. Uh, I love the Jeep 30s, and uh, I'll tell you why I like the Jeep 30. So I like the GP 30s because the cab style is pretty iconic, nice and square, but where the back of the cab is, just the sleek look, everything just kind of tapers off, like right here, just tapers down into the body and I just really like that shape it just looks really cool I really do love high hoods like the Jeep 9 Jeep 7s but Jeep 30 just speaks to me because that cool design this engine is probably from the late 1960s let's see there's the front of her and one of my good friends that's a Conrail fanatic uh, let's see Mr. Dockman Production, he mentioned to me that this engine does operate. It has a problem. It can only go in like in reverse or something. I forgot what they said about it. 
but you can see inside of this engine. Gotta love that Conrail blue paint. <laughs> and it's so bright and it shines through everything else. Love it. And you can go inside this locomotive too, but because of COVID, I think it's uh, shut down right now. All right, guys, we're moving on. So here is, ah, the John Bull. This engine is so cool. Here, I'll step back. Number one for this. Such a cool looking locomotive. There you go. And don't pay attention to that. We'll get to that locomotive in a little bit. You guys have to wait and see. <laughs> but here's a uh, the John Bull. Look at that. Lots of history right here. This is built. Uh, the replica was retired in 1999, but it was built in 1940. That is amazing. So this engine, the replica engine, is very old itself. It's kind of funny. So uh, here's a little coach for it. The number three car. And there is a placard. We'll go reader. But this is a, uh, looks like a two... What, 280 steam locomotive? Probably from the late 1800s. Let's see. There we go, 1888. Retired 1939. Compact but powerful 280. Con consolidation. Wheel arrangement was given a boost. Popular in 1875. Pennsylvania Railroad built its first locomotives of design. So that is so cool. If you guys want, you can read this. Pause and read this little script right here. I know it's a lot of small words, things like that, but a lot of cool history. And I guess with this engine, you're starting to see that bell pair firebox design all the way back in the 1880s. That's so cool. And that uh, firebox design was very, very famously made by the Pennsylvania. So cool. Got ourselves a little, uh, like a wooden gondola car. A hopper. A Pioneer Hopper. That is so cool. And this is old too. 1895. Amazing. Alright. Test weight car. So they could use these to uh, do certain tests. Things like that. Looks pretty handy. Love the paint on there. Uh, test the scales. Wow. And look, this was used up to Conrail days. Look at that, CR right on the sides. So this thing was used for a very, very long time. But it's painted back to its original Pennsylvania livery. Yeah, he's probably going this uh, caboose as well. This is a really cool caboose. Uh, I've actually been into a similar one at um, uh, WKNS Railroad. They have a very similar style car. Yeah, I'll back up and show you guys the full car. It is really pretty. It's a nice orange color. A little stove in there. Nice. Looks like a commuter electric. And I have seen these. So, um, guys, if you ever go out to a scenic railroad and uh, you see trucks with this design, and then if you look in the each end's like a cab, you can control it from either side. Um, you'll see like lights or like a partition like this and then you'll see lights up top like marker lights most likely it was one of these cars like the light box up top um, this is a restored one and I, I have been in this one as well as a commuter but these trucks give it away and also the catch right here it's like a cow catcher plow right here I've seen this several times um, over and over again um, these scenic railroads will take one of these uh, doodle bugs, as I call them, and they'll convert it to a coach. Now, this most likely was a Bethlehem Steel style coach, but the power truck's on them. And it even has the, uh, I always love this, check this out. This tube right here that I'm pointing at goes all the way down. And I believe that was used to raise and lower the pantographs, which are up top all the way over there. There they are. There it is right there. 
the mighty pantograph. And there is someone in that car. I'm not sure if we can take a look. Oh, here's a placard for it. A faster commute. There you go, right there. 1931, owner of Reading Company, Bethlehem Steel. So yeah, sometimes I do know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it looked like a Beth, uh, Beth Steel car, the way it's manufactured. But I've been in many of these cars. The floors are usually made of concrete. But to the right of that is the mighty Atlantic locomotive. This is the Lindbergh train and has a really crazy story. I believe this outran the plane and they were able to develop the film on the train cars as they couldn't do that in flight. Now this engine has been fully restored. Look at that. Juniata shop right there, nice and shiny. We all know about that. Built 1914 up in, uh, I guess, Altoona Works. Beautiful, beautiful locomotive. We'll get to the other side in a minute. Uh, I got someone taking a look over there. But these drivers are taller than me. Like, here's my head limit right here. So I come up to like right about here and these drivers are just huge. It's amazing. I'd love to see this thing run, but it's been statically restored. Like all that's painted over all the pistons, but it is beautiful as is. Now we go back to uh, the tender here. And I believe the cab is restored as well. Yeah, looks so good. It's museum quality. <laughs> yeah, the number 460 done there in gold leaf. Nice. And we'll take a look at the front in a moment. And they did an amazing job. This is a beautifully restored locomotive. Now it looks like they have a little bit of a video here. 1955. So it looks like Frank Tetnall, a member of the Friends of Railroad Museum, driving his friends to uh, Richard Lane and shot this movie, the number 460. You guys can see how fast this engine's going. That would have been something to see for sure. See everything just whizzing by the train. And back here we have a dispatcher desk. I'd hate to have this person's job. Look at all the stuff they're in charge of. <laughs> and the ghost behind the chair just gave us an all clear. Check that out. And these signals are very, um, very well known for the Pennsylvania Railroad because uh, from my understanding that the Pennsylvania Railroad did not want to put in different lights or lenses. They wanted to use one light and this is the most efficient way to do it because it would save money on colored lights or colored lenses. So if everything was the same color, and I believe these are known as position lights. Little Lehigh Valley caboose next to these uh, Pullman cars. We'll go this side and we'll work our way down from this side. Oh, there's inside of the caboose. Pretty cool, nice wooden caboose. Then you have the uh, C and PA snowplow, fully restored. Such a cool looking car. And here's another look at the front of the plow. And I always thought this looked like a boat. Looks like a submarine or a giant boat coming towards you. But if you guys had a good snowfall and this thing's rolling down the track, I can't imagine the, uh, the amount of snow throw going up that side right there. It would've been pretty spectacular. But it does look like a boat. What do you guys think? Tell me in comments. I think it looks so cool. All right, guys, here's another steam engine. Not a problem with that. I love steam engines. They are my favorite. And this one is like an educational tool. So it's all labeled like cylinder, valve chamber, written here, you go up top, builder's plate. Just so much to see. And uh, this is number 2846. And uh, let's see what this is. Looks like a, a 2, a 2.8.0, another 2.8.0, huh, look at that, because you have one, two, three, four, and then four on the other side, with a bell pair firebox right there, bell pair firebox, which makes it instantly Pennsylvania, <laughs> and uh, get everything listed out here, like air pump, and I think this is the one they have opened up, you can kind of walk in and see all the controls. Let's see. 
All right, guys, and here is the cab of the steam locomotive. Engineer side over here. Fireman side over here. Fireman's in charge of keeping enough water in there, keeping the fire hot. And then most likely you'd have someone else shoveling or your fireman shoveling coal. Because this engine does not have a stoker. So you're shoveling coal, and there's your shovel. Right there. <laughs> Get to work. <laughs> but the uh, engineer is in charge of keeping the train moving, keeping it on time, keeping up with the fireman. And it's like a communication process. Like both, you know, engineer and fireman work together as a team. And if they have someone else up in the cab shoveling coal or fireman shoveling coal, it's a uh, team effort to keep the engine running and on time. But surprisingly, guys, this engine is actually pretty simple. Uh, I don't want to go through everything that I know about the engine. You guys would go to sleep on me, but it's a very simple locomotive. All right, guys, so next to the H6, they actually have like station style seating, so you can sit here. And I like the little crowd dividers. <laughs> So if you're not too uh, keen to sitting next to someone, there's like a little divider, give you uh, some personal space. But behind that is this beautiful Pennsylvania coal hopper. And uh, yeah, I love this style hopper. According to the sign, this was built in the 1800s and retired in the 30s. So I'm um, surprised this wasn't scrapped, honestly, because of World War II. But it's here and it's in uh, beautiful Tuscan paint. It's not brown, it is Tuscan. <laughs> All right, next to that, we have this beautiful Delaware and Hudson D&H boxcar. Very similar to the Lehigh Valley. And D&H isn't that far away. They're up in New York. Um, D&H land, it's actually where I found um, a bunch of cool stuff up there with one of my other YouTube friends. It's awesome. The DNH. That is such a cool stamp. All right, so we are going to get to the rest of that refrigerator car. There's a whole exhibit about that. You can actually go inside the car. So we'll get to that on the other side of this tanker. But here's a three dome tanker right here. And the cool thing is, I just noticed that they converted it from hot box to roller bearing. Right there, got your roller bearings. Right there, here's your box. And there's still the little flap cover, the hinge for the cover. All right, guys, and next to that tanker, we have this beautiful Lehigh, New England LE. Hopper. Now I've actually been in um, an LNE caboose at the WKNS. It was really cool, and uh, it's like a little work shed caboose. Ah, uh, porthole caboose. Love these. <laughs> Love those windows. The uh, porthole style windows makes it look like a boat. And this caboose was built in 1942, and I'm actually surprised it's all metal because it's right before the war. So. And war production, these would have been mostly made of wood instead of this metal material right here. All right, guys, I can't forget about this. This is the mighty GG1, fully restored. I believe this is nicknamed Blackjack. But one of the volunteers pointed out something really cool, why it's called Blackjack. So do the math really quick. Four plus nine, 13, plus three is 16, plus five equals 21. <laughs> That's why it's called Blackjack, not because of the paint, it's a uh, Brunswick green, but because of the numbers, honor equal 21, so blackjack. Isn't that crazy? And I always forget how many wheels this thing has. I believe it has 20 wheels, because you have four, four leading, four trailing. That's eight right there, and then 12 drive wheels. So yeah, 20 wheels, absolutely insane. I'd love to go inside one of these. We can see the cab up there. Um, it is kind of turned on up there and there's the little lights up there actually your uh, I believe that's your readout for your signals for your uh, cab signals pretty cool then here's the other side amazing and you got the iconic Raymond Lowy striping right here the designer of the GG1 Mr. Lowy so glad he did that. And this engine was actually upgraded with roller bearings right here. You can see that right here, almost like a Timken bearing. But this thing is so cool. If you ever look under a GG1, this is like a shroud. And what you really want to see is underneath. So check that out. It's like all open across. There's the bell. We'll have to hit that later. <laughs> but yeah, there's underneath the GG1. Pretty cool, right? 
There's an air tank. Like, there's so much cool stuff hidden under here. And guys, this here might be the pole to lift up the pantograph. So let's trace that down, see where it goes. Yes, here it is. Look at that. Right here, look at this contraption. So it's got a hook on it, and you can adjust the hook size with this, uh, like almost like a turnbuckle. You pull this out, and you can pull up or down <laughs> your pantographs. And guess what, these are made of galvanized metal. So the metallurgy of these, like this is iron right here, or steel. You have galvanized, so these kind of bond to one another. So I'm glad they're able to paint this over. It's probably frozen in place. <laughs> But uh, a lot of cool things about this locomotive. So water, right here, water. Underneath there's a water hookup. And that's because these engines had a steam generator that would uh, hook up to the uh, amenities on cars. So on the other side, when we get to the baggage car right here, I'll show you where it would hook up. But this is so cool. So let's finish with the GG1 and then we'll uh, go look on to the other things in the museum. All right, so according to the F on this engine, we are looking at the front. I know it's kind of hard to tell because it has uh, two different cabs, but up here you have all these different electrical hookups. Um, if you flip these up, there's like all these different pins in them, really quick, gotta be respectful here. Um, then you have your, your brake. Then over here, this is where the magic happens. This is your steam line, and this would hook up to other cars through the steam line there to, um, you know, provide amenities and such. And these things always look so like futuristic. Looks like a spaceship. And the wheels are even spoked. It's so crazy, look at that. Spoked wheel. Looks like a steam engine. Now guys, a couple of things about the GG1. Um, from what I've heard, a lot of the frames have been destroyed just from overuse and abuse. Which is pretty typical of these older locomotives. But the other main concern were PCBs, which are used in the uh, with the transformer cycle of the locomotive to take the uh, power up top, convert it to either DC or AC. So that's a carcinogen, so they can't have that. But I would love to see one of these run again, and I could go on a whole tangent about how they could do something like that, but we won't have time for that today. <laughs> so we're gonna move on. So next we have a uh, Pennsylvania Railway Express Agency baggage car with the porthole windows. Those are so cool. Got some stuff ready to load into the car, ready to pull out by the GG1, if she only had power. <laughs> now the railroad started going to metal cars, not only because of the cost and timeliness of building a metal car, uh, but the wooden cars were a little bit more dangerous because if you would have a collision or a derailment, most likely the car would break and hurt people, or the uh, goods and services would also be destroyed. So they went to mostly metal cars. All right guys, so there's a little bit more to see on this back side of the museum, actually that side. So we're gonna walk down that way. Um, this museum is so great. There's just so much to see, so much to do. Uh, I know COVID has kind of crippled the uh, entertainment industry and also the hands-on industry. Like these cars to my left and right, which you guys are gonna pass by. You should be able to go inside of those and check them out, but it's kind of on hold right now. So I, I want to check out this beautiful consist of antique Pennsylvania cars. And then we're gonna to go to the other side of the museum. There's so much more to see over there. Oh, I forgot about the reefer, the reefer car you can go in. We'll check that out too. So before we check out this whole consist of cars, we got some maintenance away equipment right here. We got this guy trying to pedal away on a uh, hand cart. There you go, old timer. He's not getting anywhere very fast with this uh, train in front of him, the Pennsylvania Special. Pennsylvania Railroad, looks really cool. But behind that is the coolest thing. There's a rail bike, one of the earlier ones. And uh, this would be so cool to ride, but I feel like you would topple over like that way. It just looks really bizarre, but I guess you kind of have to lean in towards the wheel right here. At the turn of the century, local passenger trains like this one served small communities all over Pennsylvania. At the front of the train, Two baggage cars carry express packages, milk, and other important cargo. Behind these cars, a combine car carried bags of mail, luggage, and other shipments. This was also the train's smoking car where men gathered to smoke cigars. 
At the rear of the train, two coaches accommodated up to 120 passengers. Cheese. The plane fine golden oak panel that was a trademark of the Victorian era. So this must be the fancy uh, men's car, I guess that's what they called it. Makes this really fancy carriage. Look at that. I love the wheels on there and just the door, the craftsmanship of that. Yes, I guess this is the men's parlor smoking car. As he said, after the combo car. I'm not sure. Uh-oh. We have the, uh, <laughs> the funeral buggy. Isn't that amazing? So fancy, too. Little or you know, ornaments up top. Looks right out of the Haunted Mansion. So uh, here's more of that station seating. I actually tried out one of these seats. They're very comfy. Um, kind of keeps your back straight up. And I'm also thinking that these were not only to separate people, but probably to prevent people from falling asleep in train stations. All right, here's a baggage car. All wood construction. Adams Express Company. Quality Products Dairy. Wow. Look at that. He's got butter, cream, milk, pasteurized. Very cool. Let me go on to this car right here. U.S. Mail, Quarryville. Wow. 1916. Even the uh, government back then was behind all the times of vehicles. <laughs> All right, here's the, uh, this looks like a mail car, combo car. It says baggage, pretty cool. Yeah, there you go, leased by the Strasburg Railroad, beginning 1960. Wow, pretty amazing. Yeah, I love to see this thing run. Such a beautiful locomotive. Alright guys, and here is the front of the 1223. Such a beautiful engine. And I love these lights, these are the marker lamps. If you get them in sight, you can actually see right through the lens into the bulb. So cool, like right there. Look at that. <laughs> Alright, so right behind the uh, number one and the number three car, here's just something so cool that you guys can do at this museum. Now, I know... Um, I haven't been to any other museums, honestly, that you could do this. But check this out. You can actually go down here into like this test pit and go underneath of this 280. So we are actually going to go underneath the steam engine. This is so cringe, but I love it. And it tells you about where everything is. Go up to the front. There's your uh, pilots right there. And then you come back and everything is just labeled. Lots of lighting in here, you can see everything. Valve gear, that's amazing. And there's just so much stuff with a steam locomotive that you would never see unless you're underneath the one. Wow. It's amazing. Let me go back to, there's the tender pin right there. Water supply hose. Eh, it's got some cracks in it, but whatever. <laughs> the brake beam, so cool. So yeah, this is underneath of an antique steam locomotive. What do you guys think? I think it's pretty cool. All right guys, here's the Fruit Growers Express train. Got some mannequins doing some work up there. Just talked to one of the volunteers here for a little bit. And there's just so much great information here from the staff. Uh, if you guys ever have any questions at the uh, museum, just ask any of the volunteers or staff here at the museum. They'll be glad to help you out. But we got talking trains. No problem with that. And then here's the entrance to the Delaware and Hudson. We'll go up here really quick. So yeah, pretty standard car. Nice wooden floor, wooden sides. Pretty basic. It's actually kind of warm in there, surprisingly. So here's the uh, other central part of the museum inside. And to my right, we have the instruction car. It looks like it's open. Let's see, let's go in there. And we're actually running out of time because uh, 
They close at four in about 35, 40 minutes. So we'll do our best. It looks like this is a converted mail car because of these. Would have had the uh, mailbag hook. Now here is the instruction car. Now, from my knowledge of this car, um, they had to rebuild this car from scratch. When they received it, they didn't understand what it was. Uh, there were just parts everywhere, and they're still on the hunt for many of the other parts. But this car is full of cutaways of equipment, like this right here, uh, different valve types, and they're meant to instruct students on how they work. So this car was act, you know, to act like a, a, a school, pretty much, on wheels, to get people involved with railroading, uh, start new employment. So uh, amazing, right? All this cool stuff on the wall, different air cylinders, these little like brake systems over here, you know, different style gauges, things like that. But they said that this car was honestly for uh, training engineers, brakemen, uh, train staff. Up top you have all these fans, you know, cut away at how thin, look how thin that air tank is. I mean, look at that. It's nothing at all, almost. More cutaways right here. So, uh, look, here's an automatic brake valve. That's so cool. So, uh, when they brought this car here, uh, they were saying that underneath of it, they could find all this plumbing, and they just didn't know what it was. They did more research, and they're like, oh, it's one of the uh, education cars. So, uh, they put it back together as best, you know, to their knowledge. All right, guys, how could I forget about this monster? I've actually been in the cab of this locomotive, this is the E44 Pennsylvania scheme on there. This thing would have been painted most likely Conrail blue or Penn Central black back in the day, but I love the rectifier engines. That's what they call them, uh, E44, E33 rectifiers. But it's just so cool. There's your panograph up there. And on the sign right here, we actually have it. It almost looks like uh, Lehman Junction right here, uh, but there's a picture of it right there. Looks like Penn Central. Yeah, Penn Central. It's very blurry, but uh, there's another Penn Central behind it. Just so cool. Also known as the brick. So, might be able to find some Conrail blue paint on this monster. Probably won't be that hard to find. But I love the paint scheme on here. And, uh, oh, look at that. They have a stamped F. It's like welded to the frame. And then a sticker F for front. And uh, usually you'll find Conroe blue on the wear points. But uh, this one's pretty well painted back to Brunswick. And these engines also had the uh, PCB problem. So when these were probably decommissioned in the 70s, 80s, um, you know, they still had that hazard in them, just like the GG1 behind it right there. So guys, we're moving on to the uh, Pennsylvania insulator car to my left. I love this paint scheme on here. It's like a super lock on this door. Nothing's coming out of here. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> and then to the right of that is a uh, electrified engine. I forgot what these are called. I don't think it's a DD1. It's a switcher. It's a box cab? Is it a box cab? Let's see. Um, B1. So I'm going to go on a limb here and call it a box cab switcher. <laughs> and there she is. Right there. Got some other cool cars here. Uh, let's see. Western Maryland car. Ooh, I love the Western Maryland. Let's go up here. Check her out. Wow. There's like an office in there. Let's make it close enough. There's like an office and uh, some other dining room chairs. It's a nice wooden car. It's nice. And then in the back, you used to be able to walk up there. Aha, there is a way up right here. All right, we'll go up here and check it out. It's like, Nick, don't fall. <laughs> uh, here's some like really cool looking furniture. 1930s, 40s. All wood interior. 
beautiful. And there's a rotary dial phone right there. This is one of the only Penn Central pieces they have. We have a Penn Central hopper and that nice New York Central green paint scheme, the mint. <laughs> there you go. For all you Penn Central guys out there, I love that color. Looks so nice. And the, uh, it's called a standardized hopper built 1955, so she's pretty old. It's got the old hot boxes on her too. I always thought it was so interesting how um, Penn Central was able to keep the New York Central green colors, and then a lot of their engines were just painted all black, probably to save money. Uh, I'm aware Penn Central did have some money issues. They asked for federal funding many, many times, but it's just interesting how that plays out. So to my right, we actually have more steam engines. I call these like logging trains, geared trains. And they have like the old Lincoln coupler, little dome stack. Let's see. Letonia Railway. And this is the, uh, oh God, look at those gears. It's so angry. This is actually built in 1906 from the uh, description plate there. But this is such a really cool locomotive. All the gears and such. You have all the gearing here. And then behind it is another very interesting locomotive. It's called the Climax. <laughs> the poor man's locomotive. Oh, that is so sad. Look at that. And then behind it, we have another logging style locomotive. This is the Heisler. Look at that. Right on the side there. Heisler. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. Love that paint scheme on there. And just to show you guys how simple these are. Look at that. Very simple. You have an oiler there. You have your engineering controls right here. So simple. A lot of power. <laughs> now this little guy is really cool. This might be a Ford. Um, AA Ally Industry. This used to be outside, I believe. Um, let's see. Vulcan Ironworks was the owner. That's really cool. And uh, let's see the manufacturer of it. Yeah, Wilkes-Barre Vulcan Ironworks. So this is a Vulcan engine. And it's also Lincoln coupled into the uh, Heisler right there. So we are on the final stretch here at the museum. Got one little section to see and then it's pretty much it inside. Um, right here we have, it's a G5S locomotive. It's a 460 steam locomotive. And this engine's huge as well. And uh, this one, was actually featured in the museum for a while because it had the water scoop underneath, which is, and there it is, right right there. So they could collect water while still um, running the steam engine at full speed, and it would shoot the water up, and it would actually splash out, making a huge, huge mess. But it was very efficient with the water scoop, so they could continue going on. They still had coal, of course. Now here's a slant back tender. I always thought these were so cool. And uh, a little 94. <laughs> the 040 switcher. There you go, right there. And there's the front of engine 94. To my right is the GP9, one of my favorite locomotives of all time. But here's the Jeep 30 again and her majestic Conrail paint scheme. World's fastest locomotive. Jeez. And they used to say the larger the drivers, I mean these are huge, but the larger the drivers the faster they would go. And it's stamped E2 up there, Juniata Shops. <laughs> Jersey Central, there's a little maintenance away car, it's pretty old. All right, so here we have a, uh, it says BS Company. <laughs> That's kind of funny. This is a fireless steam engine, so it's like a thermos. They load it up with steam, most likely probably through this right here. 
and it loads it up like a thermos and fills up this chamber to have a sparkless steam engine. Look at that. Pretty cool. It's like a big old uh, <laughs> thermos and everything is orange. Even the, uh, <laughs> this, the heat shielding and everything in there. Next we have this uh, Pennsylvania Power and Light Company. And I've actually seen one of these before a long time ago. It might be the same one. This one's just restored. But this is also, I believe, a fireless steam engine. Let's see. Yep. It's just a big old thermos engine. And they could hook it up to the uh, power plant and have it for a little bit with steam in it. Then bring it on back. Now here, this is a saddle tank. Little baby saddle tank engine. So, uh, Reading number 1251, according to the adopt a train sign. And I've ridden behind one of these before. They are very, very cool, hardworking little engines. And a lot of them were built by Vulcan. So I don't know, I don't see a Vulcan plate on here, but these are really cool. It's the Cumberland Valley Railroad. I have one word, it's Railroad. Number 20. V and T and RR, the Tahoe. Now this engine is just like just a piece of art <laughs> in all its glory. And check this out. It's a 260 American style locomotive. And there it is, built by, looks like it says Baldwin on the front. But a lot of people call these the Old West steam engines. All right guys, so here I'm in the mirror. Um, it's a blurry mirror. <laughs> this is really cool. I have never seen this exhibit here, but what you're seeing, these are cab signals, so cab acknowledgement signals. So these would be up in the cabs of the locomotives, and they would pick up the signals from the track, and you have all these different combinations of signals, like approach, clear, restricting, and it's like there's different combinations. So when they get in the middle here, they start becoming grouped. Now, a very interesting thing about those cab signals they still use those signals today, and they call them the Conrail signals, not Pennsylvania Railroad. But you hear guys talking about when they take their railroad exam, when they uh, are in school, they're like, oh, those Conrail signals are pretty pesky. But honestly, it's just a combination of the two. You have to decide what they are. But the system has been in place for probably over 100 years at this point. So just uh, study hard. Study, study, study. All right, guys, that's going to conclude this video here at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania located in Lancaster across the street from the Strasburg Railroad. Uh, had a great time here today looking at all the pieces indoors and outdoors. Uh, it was a beautiful day to walk around even though it's winter. Uh, wasn't too bad, but in here it's nice and toasty. And uh, I really had a great time speaking with one of the uh, volunteers here. Uh, so friendly and nice and actually had a ton of information on the GG1 and actually had family that worked for the Pennsylvania Railroad. So it was really cool to connect with them and talk to them about trains. But if you guys are interested in visiting, I'll place a link in the description of their website. They also are looking for volunteers always, and, you know, they also have a bunch of events on there you can check out. Uh, if you're new to the channel, always consider subscribing. Make sure to hit a comment down below. Love reading your guys' comments. Give them one of these. The video also really helps. Until next time, everyone, happy railroading. We'll see you next time.